Hey everybody, welcome to our tutorial on speed tree. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to talk a little bit about what speed trees are, uh, how you can garden them, create them in your scene, and also uh, how you can uh, make them affected by gusts of wind that you artificially create uh, in your scene. So first of all, let's get started uh, with uh, finding out where the speed trees are. We can go over here to the prop section of our content window, and in our prop section we have a folder called tree. And these are the default trees that come embedded with iClone 6. We'll have a ton of other content packs uh, available uh, in the future as well. So you will literally have unlimited amounts of trees to uh, to mess around with. So we have everything from like Japanese maple trees to uh, Norway spruces, uh, worldwide trees, curly palms, uh, Alaska cedars. Let's just go ahead and, ha let's go ahead and add in this uh, Douglas fir. I'm just going to double click that and add it in. And you can see it's a fairly big tree. So we'll just uh, zoom out a little bit here. And this is a speed tree right here. Now, basically, we have this tree, and if I press play, um, and I zoom in on the leaves here, you can see that we will have um, the leaves a little bit, uh, moving a little bit, uh, slightly affected by the wind. Um, not too much, though, because we don't have any wind uh, going on here yet. Uh, it's slightly uh, stronger later on. That's just natural as a gust of wind comes along. Let's take a look, uh, first of all, at how to create gusts of wind and how to create, uh, how to change their direction. So as soon as you have a uh, speed tree in your scene, uh, I'm going to add a couple of them in actually just so we can see the results on two different trees. So let's go ahead and add in our uh, curly palm as well. Probably never see these two trees together in uh, the real world, but this is icon. We can do what we want. So here we have a uh, curly palm and a Douglas fir together. And what if I want to make these trees uh, sway in the wind? I want them to be affected by some artificial wind that I create. Well, you notice that as soon as you add a speed tree into your scene, if you go into your scene tab here, you will have a uh, item called plant wind. And you can see that right here. If we make that visible, you'll see a little uh, um, fan gizmo will come up there, and that's uh, indicating the direction which the wind is going. Uh, the easiest way to uh, you know change your wind direction is just press the E hotkey, and you can move that around. You can move it from left to right. Um, you can even move it up and down if you want. So uh, I'm just going to leave it facing the uh, right here. It's facing the uh, X plus axis. And uh, that's indicated by these uh, this world axis here on the ground. The uh, red indicates the X. The green indicates the Y. And the Z indicates the... Uh, um, rather, blue indicates the Z axis there. Uh, all right, so let's take a look at this. Uh, first of all, we have this Douglas fir and this um, uh, curly palm again. And we notice if I play back uh, really quickly, we'll take a look at which direction the uh, wind is going. Uh, first of all, we should be able to notice it a bit more on the curly palm. Um, you can see as the wind gusts pick up, hurry up wind, we have some wind kind of just uh, you know blowing this way. It looks like slightly in this direction because that's the direction the fan is going. Although it's kind of too soft to tell at this moment here, we have just small gusts of wind. So let's go over here, uh, select our tree, and in the Modify panel, we'll have a bunch of different um, uh, items here. Let's go to the tree item first. We can start gardening. We're not going to do that right now. But I'm going to go right now to Plant Wind Setting, and that'll open up the wind settings right here. Uh, you can also get it if you select the wind item here in the uh, uh, Scene Manager. Um, so here we have the amount of strength. If we increase this strength, let's say we increase it to, uh, you know, way up there, um, maybe it will 70, 80 percent uh, right there and increase the gust frequency and let's uh, change that direction. Let's change it the other direction and see um, how our plants react. So I'm going to just go ahead and press play. We should have some stronger wind. Uh, you can see the trees are kind of going in the direction of my fan right here. They're blowing that away. Uh, my palm tree is kind of bending over right there and swaying back and forth. They're both blowing this way. Essentially, you can see it a little bit better there. We get a stronger gust of wind. Okay, so we now know that they're going in the direction of my fan. So if I change my fan around, you can also notice the, uh, the Z values change as well um, in our direction um, uh, parameters there. I can you know, change it uh, to up or down as well, and we get the uh, Y and X axis axes uh, directions uh, changing as well. But we don't really need to do that for this tutorial. If you want to, you can. So let's enter into our timeline then and find uh, how we can keyframe this wind uh, because you notice that these um, parameters here are green text, which means they can be keyframed. Uh, anything in icon with green text can be keyframed. So let's open this up and we have this wind item right here. If we twirl it down, there's nothing there. So let's go here and uh, select direction and strength for our wind. 
And now we have uh, at the very beginning, let's just uh, start really small. So let's go down to uh, have our strength maybe something like uh, this and our gust frequency can be down somewhere to like uh, 40. And then uh, I'm going to just uh, zoom out on my timeline a little bit, holding my Alt key and scrolling my mouse wheel. Let's go to somewhere around uh, frame 500. And let's have that, uh, let's select like the wind item there again. Let's have that strength, the range just really boost up. Um, again, like I was at about 70 or 80 right there. And let's increase the gust frequency as well. So you'll see a, a gradual increase of the amount of wind from here to here. And uh, maybe we can even bring that uh, further down as well. Maybe to about uh, 750. I think that'll give it enough time. And let's zoom out a little bit. And then maybe at, uh, you know, frame a thousand, we wanted to uh, change direction. So let's give it a change of direction there and make the wind a bit more extreme. Um, I think that'll be kind of cool. And let's go ahead and play this back and see what happens. So I'm going to move my timeline. Uh, maybe just move it a little bit further down here. And make sure our trees are in a visible area where we can see them here. And I can even just um, decrease my timeline there as well. So we're, we know the uh, change in the uh, direction is indicated on this keyframe here. So uh, frame 1150, we have that keyframe in the direction track. And the strength um, is slowly growing from here to here. and But mostly it's growing from 0 to about 750. So just uh, keep your eye out for that. We have these little keyframes, uh, the master keyframes, to indicate where we are. Um, so let's go ahead and play that back. So you can see slowly the wind is changing direction. And it's going to start really blowing when the direction goes over to here. And now we're picking it up, picking it up and the wind is blowing in strong gusts in that direction. Okay, and it'll kind of stay at those properties um, for the rest of the timeline. Um, we'll get some random gusts coming on here. And you'll notice that now we're getting some hurricane-style winds right there, near the closer to the end of the project right there. So that's essentially how you can, you know, change the direction and the, uh, and the strength of the wind. Uh, just mess around with these sliders. It's fairly simple. Um, so that's pretty much all I'm going to cover for the uh, for the wind and everything like that. As long as you know those you know three parameters, I think your your set direction, strength, and gust frequency. So let's go ahead and start some gardening then. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just delete my. Uh, actually, no, I'll keep my palm tree. I'm going to delete the uh, Douglas fir and let's create a couple of. Uh, I don't think the palm tree actually as well. Bring in another uh, tree here. Let's bring in some Japanese maple trees. So I'm going to just bring in this. Uh, green Japanese maple tree. It's a very nice looking uh, tree. Uh, so let's go ahead and start some gardening then. Uh, gardening is fairly simple. Um, in real life maybe not so much but in Icon it's super easy. We'll just go to start gardening here in the modify panel and then we have the option to uh, plant or fell. So a feller means you'll cut the trees down and the planter means you'll plant them. So let's uh, plant some first. We have the uh, option for brush preview which is fairly straightforward. And this is the size of the area you want to plant in. So let's go ahead and uh, plant in a very large size here. And if, if I uh, scroll my mouse key, uh, let's actually add a few more uh, trees into that area first. If I scroll my mouse uh, wheel here, you'll notice that it uh, creates a different pattern for where I'm you know, planting those trees there. So let's go ahead and just plant some right there. Uh, click once and you have a bunch of trees. And if I press escape and control Z, they're all gone. I can start gardening again once I have that selected. And I can change the height variation as well. So if I want, if I want uh, you know, different heights of my trees, so you can see here there's a lot of different uh, variation in heights. Um, the angle variation is the, you know, the angle at which they're uh, standing. Um, not very much for these ones. You can notice it more with the, uh, with the palm trees. But we can you know, bring those both up right there. And let's maybe add, take, it, take it down a little bit. Let's take it down to about uh, 8 there and just plant those in random spots. There we go, and press escape again to get out of that. And if I wanted to, you know, start cutting down some trees, I can go the feller, and I maybe decrease the size here. I wanted to, you know, cut down that tree in the background there. Get away. And, uh, you know, you can just, you know, cut down all the trees you want. Let's go ahead and go back to the planter. Uh, I'm going to actually add in some, uh, you know, fall, fall style Japanese maple trees here. And uh, we're going to start guarding that. We're going to make a nice mixture of, uh, of you know, orange and uh, green trees here. There we go. 
So, you know, you can create something like this, like a nice um, summer slash fall uh, scene, you know, in Japan. And you can, you know, add some Japanese pagodas in the background and everything like that. And then we have, uh, you know, if we play back, we have uh, the wind settings. We go into our scene manager and open up our, uh, we need to stop the playback first. Open up our wind uh, gizmo here. You can see it's currently there. And all the wind uh, settings have been reset because we've deleted those original trees to which they were applied. So now we would have to, you know, take one tree here, go to plant wind settings, and we can just increase the strength, the gust frequency, something like that, and change this direction to, let's do it 180. So we'll change all the way around uh, to the other direction right there. And let's press play. So now we'll have, uh, you know, we can pretend that we're going through a, Dark Japanese forest. Let's take control G and take off that grid. You can, uh, you know, if we had a nicer, uh, you know, background, we could pretend like we're running through a forest or something like that. So that's pretty much it. That's all your speed tree, uh, assets right there. Uh, all the, all the stuff you really need to know about speed tree. They render great in, uh, in Unity as, or in not Unity, in Indigo as well. Um, so, you know, experiment with that. Uh, they render really well. Uh, the leaves and everything render really well in Indigo. And they're really fun to use, really fun to play with, and add to your scene. So that's about it. Uh, thanks for watching this tutorial, guys, and enjoy your speed trees.